top five advantages the Big 12 has over the Pac-12. I think it's pretty cut and dry why we're doing this today. But did uh, you clear this with Stuart Mandel? No, I yeah, did not. Okay. I, didn't, I did not. Uh, or anybody who's look in there. Look there. I'm sure there's some. I could go through and find some advantage the Pac-12 has to the Big 12. Although right now it's hard to see them. So I'm saying here top five advantages the Big 12 has of the Big of the Pac-12. Number five, the Pac was already in a bad TV deal. From the start, this was not a great TV deal for them. They, they, Larry Scott messed up the networks. It wasn't great. So they were in a negotiating position where they were trying to get out of a bad deal that they put themselves in. And that was one of the reasons George Klyovkov is even there. So when you're in a bad TV deal to start, now look, uh, the Big 12 is not getting a, a ton of money compared to the Big 10 or SEC, but their deal is pretty fair. Yeah, 42 and it was, six by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it was market value at the time, so better than what the Pac-12 was in because – uh, you know, their tier two rights were better off. And yeah, the Longhorn Network was the Albatross, but still worked out better than what happened with the Pac-12 and their varying different networks and, and how that, 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 hit, that hit the fan. One of the underlying or underrated parts of the Big 12 revenue stream that a lot of times gets overlooked because of the Longhorn Network is the tier three rights money that people are getting, that teams are getting, that they're also getting distributed to. And it's more than you think. It's not you know, double digit millions, but it's, it's a nice chunk of money for everybody. Yeah. I think the school uh, presidents, chancellors, all those involved in the PAC 12 deserve some blame as well. Yeah. I mean, they signed off on whatever he was doing. Um, and you know, I think his predecessors probably, is, I think the, as a culmination, but Larry Scott's the figurehead of the disaster. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about that. He is the face of the disaster that is potentially looming for the PAC 12. And look, you can't read them their last rights. I mean, let's not act like yeah. they're, they're dead in the water just yet because they are still alive. There's a live as any other conference and uh, they have some options to to pivot to I think the question is just how great are those options really and are those options any of them good enough to make this still the Pac-12 because that's what they're fighting for right they're not fighting for every individual institution necessarily unless you want to look at it in the grand scheme of things the Pac-12 staying together does save a team like Wazoo and it does save a team like Oregon State but mostly they're fighting for the brand that is the Pac-12 well let's not also act like the Pac-12 is some 100 year long dynasty either it's been a few different things along the way uh, so um, this is not you know like the the Big Ten falling apart um, but it's also not necessarily falling apart although it's kind of hard to see uh, how it stays together. But, yeah, Larry Scott deserves the, the majority of the blame along with some others. Yeah. Number four. The Pac-12 had a year to anticipate this and didn't. I mean, the, look, Texas and OU did them a favor in, in regards to, hey, this could happen to you at any time. And, you know, I don't know how if they even saw it coming, but they should have at least in every conference – should at least have their dukes up all the time, ready to go, based on what happened to the Big 12 last year where they got caught nearly flat-footed completely because of the secret negotiations that OU and Texas had. So the Pac-12 had over a year, a year to kind of... They had advanced warning. To, to brace for themselves in this possibility and weren't able to do anything to make their league more attractive to USC and USCLA. Good point. I mean, I don't know what they were going to do. Yeah, uh, you I know, know, but... I mean, uh, if, you know, but I know what you're saying is he could at least had the conversations and been aware that, hey, there's a good chance they might be on their way out and at least cut it off. I mean, that's the thing is OU and Texas left after shaking everybody's hands. Oh, it's good to see you. You're right. Never been stronger together. Future's bright. And they turn around just ee, 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 all over, you know, Bowlesby and everybody else. So you didn't have time to see that really coming, but the signs were there. The signs were there, and you didn't have time necessarily to see UCF, USC and UCLA. And UCLA is the surprising part. Let's face it. USC leader is not gonna, so much of a surprise. I was going to bring that up, Craig. Who would you have said USC Oregon. or somebody? Okay. Yeah, if it was USC and Oregon, I don't think anybody would have batted much of an eye. I mean, you would have, but it wouldn't have been as much of a surprise. I think the fact that it was UCLA and it was the entire LA market is what really went, whoa, wait a second here. Because if it had just been the two biggest brands, and let's say it was Oregon and USC, there was a lot of people that actually kind of predicted that when the whole OU Texas thing came came around. So, um, yeah, they didn't have warning, but then again, they kind of did. And um, I don't know what they could have done other than just open talks with the LA schools and maybe tried the revenue sharing route, you know, months ago. Um, and even then, I don't know that it it builds up enough to 
to match what they're going to be getting here in the future. Yeah. So it might have been all for naught, but at least it would have been something versus the absolute nothing and then looking like complete fools when you were just poking fun at the Big 12 a year ago and you look even dumber than they did by a long shot. Yeah. By the way, I'd like to make a special note of a story I sent you guys last week. I don't know if you got into it about Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, saying yeah. oh, UCLA yeah. didn't tell us anything Whatever, about this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going to look you into know what? it. Yeah, look. That was a blip on our radar. Yeah, but yeah, I just, yeah. I just thought it was funny because politicians like to say stuff like that and they have no say, like they had no say in it. They never will have a say in it. But They're he had all, to say it. But he had to say it. Yeah. Absolutely had to say it. Uh, all, it was so, 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 so bizarre. Number three, the Big 12 doesn't have to replace a massive TV market. They don't. Look, they lose Oklahoma and Texas, and yes, that's a lot of TV viewers, but it does not completely gut uh, the number two market or one market in the country, depending on the census that year, like this this does. I mean, they, they're still spread out enough over the markets that they were already in to withstand at least a little bit of it it's not a complete bloodletting like los angeles is for the pac-12 yeah this isn't losing the whole state of texas yeah i mean yeah you're losing a good chunk of it but you're also still sitting there with baylor and tcu and texas tech and now houston as well and no it's not gonna on average live up to whatever ut pulls um you know several million at a time or whatever but i mean by no means have they lost the texas market which is their bread and butter and it's always been kind of centered around and even with the oklahoma market i mean yeah there's definitely more sooners fans than there are pokes fans but the pokes are still around playing for the title last year they're gonna be good again this year uh gundy's a great coach and uh i think that they will carry you know their fair share of tv sets up there in the sooner state uh or the the yeah, that's that's unfortunate that I have to say, but it yeah. is a sooner state. It is so. Um, yeah, I mean they're they're going to lose some TVs, but I still think there will be Oklahoma fans that watch Oklahoma State on occasion or uh, some of these other games that are just college football fans because that's just a college football Plus loving hate, state. You hate watch. Yeah, and there's a lot of hate watching as well. So, yeah, I mean, they're going to lose a portion, but not anywhere close, like you said, to losing basically the city of L.A. for all intents and purposes. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely just <laughs> life support for the Pac-12 in that market right now. Number two, the Big 12 is already in the process of rebranding. So they're already in it. So that allows them to be a little bit more fleet of foot when it comes to adjusting to new things. So they're already, they've already started that process. And... Uh, being able to flex into, you know, new teams. So they were already thinking about who are the next teams that we could add potentially and probably never even really occurred to them how realistically those Pac-12 teams would have been in there so soon because these things do come out of the blue. So here a new opportunity has posed itself to them. And to me, they're in a much better place to just bend in and go, okay, well, we'll take these, you know, these teams are, are welcome to join us at this point. When did they start rebranding? I mean, a year ago. Did they? I guess so. I guess so. I mean, so, when but, you yeah. lose Oklahoma and Texas, they're already, re you know, yeah, uh, when you're bringing in Cincinnati and yeah. BYU and all that, you're already kind of rebranding who you have to be. Oh, so. I thought you were talking about maybe their mottos and stuff that no, have no, no, always no. been like terrible. They're already, yeah, yeah. they're okay. already, you know. Well, re and now your mark brings in this different le edge of it, and, and, and that's rebranding too. Yeah. I mean, what, like, the and, and so they're already in it. The Pac-12 has to figure out what they can be outside of this. The Big 12 figured that out pretty quickly. And now, again, you know, the legs were going to come out of somebody. And, and it appears right now it's, it's probably the Pac-12. Here's one thing with the Big 12 versus Pac-12. I don't question for a second how much the Big 12 schools care about football, for example. Even Kansas, who's having the hardest of times. I do question how much some of those programs in the Pac-12 actually care. Pac-12 fans will tell you that. Exactly. And that's, and that's when, I, when I hear the argument about Pac-12, who's the strongest in the Big 12, and all this. And I'm just like... To me, and I know I'm, I'm in Big 12 country and all that, but to me, it's just not even that much of a debate. And I feel like the only reason it even is a debate is simply because of a couple of programs, and one has a swoosh, but quite frankly, their history is on par and not just like resoundingly above anybody in the Big 12 right now. Um, right now. Right now. Okay, but over the last 20 years, obviously, they've had a great run. But it fluctuates. But things fluctuate, no, no, it's just like right. Let's else. compare the last yeah. 20 years. Yeah. Hell, I mean, Big 12's got more, or at least as many Heisman and national championships and things of that nature. I mean, the national championship thing, USC's carried that pretty much for them, or was. Oklahoma's carrying that for the Big 12, and Texas was. Was their last the USC back-to-back -back with Pete Carroll? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. 
I mean, and Oregon, the Big 12. Oregon made it to the playoff. And, Oregon and, got Mariota as a Heisman. Yeah. He had Palmer. He had Liner. He had Bush. Yeah, but, I mean, Oklahoma's had like four by themselves in that. Yeah, you know, and a stretch. lot of times when you say things about another conference, people go, why are you t- – we're not. We're just being honest about well, how no, we I'm, feel. No, I'm, yeah. I'm responding to Stuart Mandel and anybody who acts yeah. like it's like this and this when you're talking about these two conferences. And I think that that's just – he lives in the Bay Area probably or something along those lines. We, and th- we don't know that. No, I don't, I don't know. I'm just saying, though, there's got to be – something more to it than just on the surface because I'm looking at the same surface and I don't see yep. as much of a... Dis- a- yeah, and, and, and again, this could flip. Look, if the if the Pac-12, you brought it up earlier, the Pac-12 somehow managed to make a partnership with the ACC, sure. where, which I can't wrap my head around, then it flips and the Big 12 is... is and, a- or if they would have stayed together and Lincoln Riley wins at USC, then maybe that brings yeah, a power... But, f- that's, yeah. yeah. But- uh, all right, number one, they have... Lo- the Big 12 has a longer time to negotiate the TV deal. Now, this was thrown to the pen as like the TV deal is coming up sooner. Well, the Big 12 could decide tomorrow that they want to open up the negotiation earlier. It's both parties that can do it. Plus, they have longer until the deal is up to, to renegotiate things. So, to me, that's more of an advantage in that you've got teams on June 30th as they're starting to talk about the 2024 TV deal for the or 2023 for the Pac-12 that say they're leaving. Well, that really accelerates your clock, and then you have to enter it early, not because you wanted to, because you're excited about it, because you're terrified. You're you, you're entering this with not knowing who's going to be a part of it. Yeah, you do know that two of them are gone, and you don't know about the others as well. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think having two or three years to negotiate the deal is a lot better than having one. The only. I, I don't know if this is enough confidence I have, but the only two conferences that would feel good about renegotiating their deal right now, if they could, would be the Big Ten and the SEC, and they are, right? They are. Well, the Big Ten is. Yeah. The um, SEC's got their deal. From Tim, an SE logo on his 